Chapter 6 Powerlessness 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 is often mistaken for weakness, but it is more an attribute of strength because it requires genuine humility and honesty. Admitting powerlessness means learning to surrender that which cannot be controlled. This admission can be difficult for the ego or human psyche. However, the ego's surrender of its illusion of control is the foundation of recovery. It is by humbly admitting our limitations that we can open ourselves up to receiving help from others and from a power greater than ourselves. Powerlessness and the act of surrender are critical steps in Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step programs. The 12 steps are a valuable resource for someone in recovery from alcohol and drug addiction, and it is worth considering that these steps have a more general use also. They can be applied to whatever life problems we have or be used in an effort to grow spiritually. These steps are simply a spiritual way of living in the world. The first three steps illustrate the idea of powerlessness. What are the 12 steps? The 12-step program is a set of guiding principles and a course of action for recovery from all forms of addiction and psychological problems. Originally proposed by Alcoholics Anonymous as a method of recovery from alcoholism, the program was first published in 1939. Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how more than 100 men have recovered from alcoholism, was generally known as the Big Book. The method was then adapted and became the foundation of other 12-step programs. The Fellowship of AA, or 12-step programs, is based upon reconnecting and making peace with oneself, others, and one's higher power. The underlying principle of the program is that we are healed by sharing our experiences with each other in love and honesty. Together, we can do what none of us could accomplish alone. The 12 Steps We admitted we were powerless over our problems, addictions, chronic pain, relationships, etc., to the point where our lives have become unmanageable, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity, make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God or higher power, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, admitted to God or higher power, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs, ready to have God or higher power remove all these defects of character, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings, made a list of all persons we had harmed and were willing to make amends to them all, made amends directly to these people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others, continued to take personal inventory, and when wrong, promptly admitted it, sought through prayer and meditation to improve conscious contact with God or higher power, as we understood him or her, praying only for knowledge of the divine will for us and the power to carry that out. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message and practice these principles in all our affairs. 12-Step Summary Admitting that one cannot control one's addictions. Recognizing that a higher power can provide strength while examining past errors with the help of a sponsor. Making amends for these errors. Helping others who suffer from the same addictions. In this chapter, we will focus only on the first three steps and explore the meaning of powerlessness. Step 1. You admit that you are powerless over your problems, for example, addiction, and that your life has become unmanageable. The first step occurs when you become aware that you are powerless over the problem that is making your life unmanageable. Taking this step breaks through denial, and you are then able to be honest about your condition. You acknowledge the limitations of the ego and that you have no sense of being able to solve this problem alone through your own efforts. Admitting your life is unmanageable means that you don't have control over unfolding daily events. It is a clear acceptance of your condition. There are, of course, 
things in life you can change and control. However, when they become addiction and mental health problems, you may feel that there are too many things you cannot control. As mentioned before, this first step usually refers to alcohol or drug addiction, but it can relate to any addiction or life problems you have. In the case of alcohol or drug addiction, powerlessness is the inability to say no to the first drink or drug. It is the compulsion to keep using the addictive substance despite severe consequences, whether it be financial, social, legal, etc., making life unmanageable. The first part, powerlessness, defines the problem as the inability to resist the first use. The second part, our lives have become unmanageable, deals with the inability to control ourselves after the first use. It describes the effect that the problem has had on our life. Step 2. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. The moment we accept our powerlessness, we are then ready to move to step two. This step is the recognition that a power, other than our own ego, is capable of restoring us to sanity. Once we lose the ability to regulate drug use, the big book says, probably no human power can revive it. The solution here is to find a higher power greater than ourselves. Perhaps you object to the idea of a higher power or have reservations about accepting any concept of a power greater than yourself. If this is how you feel, a helpful objective is to try and find ways to break through anger or doubts and keep an open mind. The atheist or agnostic who wants nothing to do with God can still make a start on step two. It is suggested in AA to fake it till you make it. Follow your sponsor's advice to give prayer a chance. Experience shows that those that force themselves to pray on a daily basis see growth in their spiritual life, even if slowly. All one needs is to be open to spiritual principles. The step doesn't say, we believe in a higher power. It says, we came to believe. It is a process. Step 3 made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him or her. Step three is a point where you willingly decide to surrender your ego to God as you understand him or her. More precisely, it is the decision to surrender your thoughts, will, actions, problems, and your life over to the care of a higher power. The essence of step three is the decision to rely on the guidance of a higher power rather than relying on an inflated sense of ego or willpower. In the big book, a prayer is suggested for the step of surrendering. God, higher power, I offer myself to you to build with me and to do with me as you will. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do your will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of your power, your love, and your way of life. May I do your will always. Making a decision to turn to the care of a higher power needs dedication. Simply deciding without following up with action is meaningless. While you work on what you are able to in your life, seek guidance from your higher power without worrying about the result. The serenity prayer can help as you seek knowledge and make the decision to turn your will over to God. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. How do we know the difference between the voice of ego and the voice of intuition or God? A common answer from AA members is that the voice of ego is impatient, prideful, and self-centered, whereas the voice of the self, God, or higher power brings peace, kindness, love, and compassion. They also say that higher power speaks to us through people. Therefore, listen to feedback and keep praying for higher power guidance. It is also helpful to talk with your sponsor, counselor, 
doctor, or a therapist on a regular basis and use the opportunity to discuss your life decisions. What is God as we understand him or her? Everyone has thoughts and ideas about God or a higher power. You may consider a power greater than yourself as God, creator, nature, true self, energy, pure consciousness, higher intelligence, or a greater force. In the end, the names don't matter. What really matters is that you believe you are not the creator nor the center of the universe, and you cannot control everything. The world belongs to God, evolution, creation, and cause and effect, but it doesn't belong to you. Why do some people resent the word God? There are many distortions, misinterpretations, and misconceptions regarding God, which only creates further separation and suffering. Perhaps you have an image of a God who is vengeful, judgmental, and punitive. You may resent God in the belief that religious worship encourages judgment toward others, intolerance, hatred, and war. You might say that religions have created corruption and trauma, physically and sexually abused children, resisted the advancement of modern science, and have discouraged people from living their fullest life on earth. I believe, however, that the more we understand the nature of love, the more we know the nature of God, which is different from the image of God projected by others. People rebel more against their own image of God rather than the idea of God. Behind any religion or tradition, we will always find those who are more devoted to spiritual truth and integrity. This applies to anything in life. We may find rude doctors or careless drivers, but neither define the standard for all. An old adage fits well here. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The bathwater may be dirty, but why throw out the baby in frustrated haste to solve the problem? Is belief in a higher power good or bad? Studies suggest that the benefit of spiritual involvement depends on one's perception of God. Having a positive image of God as powerful, loving, caring, and merciful is related to better mental health and well-being. On the other hand, belief in a powerful, angry, punishing, and unforgiving God creates fear, guilt, and anger that may worsen mental health. Not believing in God at all may be better than believing in an angry and punitive God, whereas belief in a distant, unavailable God or having a lack of personal connection is not likely to influence mental health any more than not believing in God. The spiritual journey through the 12 steps can be successful only if one understands the true nature of God, which is love. Do the 12 steps and the idea of powerlessness, spiritual awakening, help recovery? Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step programs offer a method of recovery which is known to be more effective than psychotherapy in achieving abstinence, according to a recent comprehensive analysis published in the Cochrane Library. This review found that 42% of AA participants were completely abstinent one year later, compared with 35% of participants who underwent other treatments, like cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Exercise Describe your understanding of your higher power. Explain what a spiritual experience is to you. How do you think it differs from an emotional or physical experience? What does surrender mean to you? What feelings do you have with respect to the word? Which part of your life are you most willing to turn over to a higher power? List recent examples of turning your will over to your higher power and acting in faith. When you sense there is something you need to be doing, how do you determine whether your higher power or your ego is talking to you? What are you thankful for? What are you sorry for? What are you angry about with your higher power? What do you need from your higher power? Exercise. How has addictive behavior endangered your life or the lives of others? What does loss of control and unmanageability look like to you? List times when you started out in control, 
but then lost control by drinking or drugging more than you had intended. How did you suffer the consequences? List three feelings you have tried to alter through the use of mood-altering drugs. Give three reasons why you would want to stop using alcohol or drugs.